today I'm going to be sharing with you the opioid addiction in America, but more importantly in Hamilton County, now it's on the rise, affecting many families throughout our county, our county where we live, harming many different people. According to Greer, as in other parts of the county, country, opioid abuse and overdoses have risen in Hamilton County, where emergency officials issued 300 doses of Narcan in 2017. This is the most recent year with information available. Narcan is basically Narcan is basically a drug that is given out by our county to people who are addicted to opioids and in need. Basically, it's a nasal spray that you use and it reverses the effects of the overdose, so it potentially saves many different lives, helps many people. In 2017, 38 people in our county alone died from overdose of opioids. The average victim of an opioid overdose has four different drugs in their system at once. And now, I'm going to share a story of a mom, Judy Rumler, who unfortunately lost her son, Steve Rumler, to opioid addiction. My son, Steve, did not want to die. He tried really hard to get well, but his prescription opioids killed him. When I talk about my son, I say that he was a wonderful son, full of love and compassion. I also openly talk about the fact that Steve was addicted to opioids. Steve suffered a back injury, leading to chronic pain that was unable to be successfully treated. Pain was debilitating and was significantly affecting his life. Eventually, he became depressed as a result, was prescribed antidepressants. They helped but did not ease his chronic pain. He was then given a prescription for opioids. He was initially thrilled that a medication finally seemed to be working for him. However, he quickly became addicted to that prescription and became a totally different person. I shared this story with you guys to show you how addictive opioids are and how you can get addicted to them just by being prescribed them by your doctor just to ease chronic pain or any pain that you're having after a surgery or just an injury in general. You wouldn't want anyone to end up like Steve, would you? Just getting addicted to opioids just from being in pain, trying to get help, but it ends up going the wrong way. Opioids are a huge problem, but they can be fixed in simple ways and need to be fixed before it keeps spreading. The numbers keep rising like they have been every single year. Now I'm going to pass it over to Jack, and he's going to share the national issues with you guys. Opioids have become a massive issue in America, with 130 Americans dying every day due to opioids. This is more than the entire Vietnam War, and more than any um, anybody killed due to gun violence over time. This costs America about 78 and a half billion dollars every year in damages lost. Of people who use heroin, 80% of them first used prescription opioids and then misused them and became addicted to heroin. Uh, next slide, please. A good analogy for this is cigarette companies in the 1960s. In the 1960s, cigarette companies told people that cigarettes would not be harmful, they would not be addictive, and they would not have any health risks. This turned out not to be true, but before this was proven, usage rates increased. This was very similar to opioids. When they were first put on the market, they were, people were told that they were safe and that they would not become addicted. Over time, we learned that was in fact false as more people began to use and misuse opioids. Another analogy for addiction is comparing addiction to a wood. And a blog poster who had previously been addicted to something posted this, that it's kind of like a wood that has become overgrown when you're addicted to something. And then you overlook it, and over time you realize that it's become a problem. And other people help you with this. And you realize that you need to start making changes. You make small changes. You have setbacks. But bit by bit, you start clearing that wood. You sharpen your tools. You keep clearing it. And eventually, you're able to get out of that wood. Uh, now, President Trump and the government have been uh, doing things to help uh, solve this problem. And Trump said, I'm directing all executive agencies to use every appropriate emergency authority to fight the opioid crisis, showing this is a very important issue to them, because opioids have become such a massive cause of death within the United States. He also said this epidemic can affect anyone, and that's why we want to educate everyone. There's not a lot of knowledge out there about just how dangerous opioids are or how prevalent they are today. Additionally, President Trump has had his own personal experience with his family of addiction, not to opioids, but to alcohol. His brother, Fred, was an alcoholic and ended up dying. And because of that, to this day, President Trump does not drink alcohol. If that's just what happens with alcohol, Imagine what could happen with opioids, something much more addictive. 
Now, the Department of Health and Human Services and the National Institute of Health have five main priorities when dealing with opioids. First, they want to improve access to treatment and recovery services. There's not a lot of options if you are addicted <coughs> to opioids on how to solve that problem and get off of them while still managing your pain. Second, they want to promote the use of overdose-reversing drugs, such as Narcan, which we discussed previously. They want to strengthen our understanding of the epidemic through better public health surveillance. Currently, there's not a lot of watching to know when somebody is, for example, addicted to opioids, and they want to make sure that people better understand this and monitor it better. Fourth, they want to provide support for cutting-edge research on pain and addiction. This is something that, while we know opioids are addictive, it's not super well known how that people become addicted, how to break that addiction, and what we can do with drugs to make it so that that doesn't happen in the future. And finally, they want to advance better practices for pain management. Currently, doctors are relatively quick, they've gotten better, but they're relatively quick to prescribe opioids to solve a pain issue. And this has become a massive issue with many Americans now addicted to opioids. Uh, so the government, in their effort to fight this, has created a website, crisisnextdoor.gov on which anybody can share their family or their personal experience with opioid addiction. One of these is from the United States Surgeon General, Jerome Adams. His younger brother was addicted to opioids and ended up going to prison because of this, trying to sustain his addiction. Additionally, Dr. Adams was, before becoming Surgeon General, he was an anesthesiologist. And in this job, he stated he has seen things that would make the average person cringe from opioid addiction. This is clearly a massive problem in America but not just in America. It's a massive problem in the state of Indiana, as we will now explain. Now that we have discussed the opioid issue within the United States, we can move into our full state of Indiana. Um, as seen on this graph, to date, Indiana has sustained $43.3 billion in economic damages, and since 2014, it has jumped $25 billion. And as you can see on the graph, the um, <coughs> jump from 2014 to 2015 is much larger than um, from 2013 to 2014 in any other year-to-year -year difference. And now just some general statistics. Um, the total number of opioid deaths since 2003 has gone up 150 people per day. And parents who use opioids have a higher chance to have kids with NAS, which is neonatal absence syndrome. And what this is, is that parents who are on opioids and are addicted to them, and when the mother has a child, the child is born with already withdrawal symptoms from um, the opioid that the mother was using. And this also increases the average um, cost for the hospital care for the child. Um, so a healthy baby would cost around $3,500 just for its hospital care when it's born. But an average baby with NAS costs up to $66,000. Um, to treat it and get uh, the baby off these withdrawal symptoms, which is a um, serious increase in um, changes. Now on this graph, there's also, going along with um, opioids having an effect on children, um, but there's about 19,000 children in foster care right now in Indiana, and over half of those kids in foster care are because of um, parents with misuse of drugs. But then, over half of the number of drugs that were used were opioids. So this is having effect not only on the parents, but the well-being of the child. So now Jamie Lee Curtis is, was an actress who has recently recovered from opioids. And on an interview with um, ABC News' Chris Connolly, she said, most people who became addicted like me do so after a prescription for a painkiller following a medical procedure. Once the phenomenon of craving sets in, it is often too late. And she also said it is a family disease meaning that going back to the um, NAS, it can be easily be transferred down from the child. And then um, if a, like a teenager sees their mother doing it or father doing it or anyone else in their family, they want, obviously would want to see what they were doing, and it can easily be transferred. So now to see how bad the numbers are in Indiana, we have compared it to Kansas. Um, so the, num the uh, gray line is the um, opioid deaths through uh, the United States, which is about 13.3 per um, 100,000 people. And as you can see, Indiana is steadily um, just along the line at about 12.6 in recent studies in 2016. But Kansas is um, very far below the US average at about an average of five, which is a huge um, difference. And it shows that Indiana's numbers are a lot worse <coughs> than any other state. 
Now a story of a woman in Hancock County. Um, she gave a 16-year-old. Well, she gave a 16-year-old fentanyl, and obviously he quickly overdosed. But she did not know what to do, or she just didn't care. So she didn't call 911, and she was easily given 12 years in prison. Then later, a search warrant found out that instead of calling 911, she searched up on Google what to do when your friend is overdosing and the dying process. And it, I don't. This just shows that she just didn't care for the child, or she didn't want to do anything about it. And now that we have discussed the issue within Indiana, we can move to Hamilton County with uh, Okay, now that we have talked about opioid abuse and addiction at a national scale and in Indiana alone, we'll get, now take a closer look into Hamilton County. One of my brother's best friends from childhood died of an overdose heroin, one of the deadliest ones. Um, he died about five years ago, and uh, he left behind a family and a seven-year-old uh, daughter at the time. Uh, I know him too, and we wouldn't have ever expected this. He thought he was fine, and it just shows that it can happen to anyone, um, whether they're doing fine or not. Uh, just check up on people, um, because you never know. According to Money.com, Fishers is the number one city to live in in the nation. So would you ever expect it, it to have a huge opioid problem? According, according to SusanWBrooks.gov, because of the huge opioid epidemic, because of, uh, the U.S. Department of Justice announced uh, almost $320 billion in grants to further help states and territories help and help fight the heroin and opioid crisis. Indiana will receive $9 million of that money. Looking at just Hamilton County Council on Alcohol and Other Drugs, they receive, we received two $50,000 grants, one for Westfield and one for Carmel, to implement a quick response team. Now this quick response team will respond to overdose as soon after it happens, and if somebody survives the opioid, uh, opioid, opioid, uh, Opioid okay. uh, is not arrested to keep them falling through the cracks and link them to resources. We talked to Monica Greer, an, an expert on opioid addiction and a director at Hamilton County Council on alcohol and other drugs and asked her about the opioid epidemic in Hamilton County. She said the Community Opioid Prevention Effort, also known as COPE, is a coalition of 45 Hamilton County professionals to address the opioid epidemic in our county. This quick response team and COPE, COPE is made up of fi firefighters, police officers, and specialists uh, focused on um, treating people with opioid addiction. Uh, now, COPE is funded through grants to <coughs> received from the state and federal agencies. Greer also explained that is a bigger problem than we think it is in Hamilton County. With over 37 opioid deaths in 2018, the number is increasing every year for the past five years. Going off of those, another statistic is uh, 170 EMS runs with Narcan in 2018, as well as 97 ER visits in 2018. Because of the huge increase in numbers, COPE will implement and enhance prescription drug monitoring and disposal opportunities for community, community members. COPE will also develop and enhance public safety and behavioral health. But also, they're also trying to uh, get prevention classes in the schools because before this presentation, I don't think a lot of us knew how big of a problem it was in Hamilton County. And also the quick response team will canvas uh, around neighborhoods for prevention classes um, get awareness out there. Um, now looking at this graph from Indiana.gov, um, in 2017, uh, 65% uh, of Indiana residents who fatally overdosed were male compared to 44, 35% female. And, um, over here there's a lot of, um, there's a graph that shows that, uh, 18 plus 60 plus um, uh, really big numbers yeah. 
Um, and as you can see, there is a significant increase from 2013 to 2017. Um, and you can see that most were accidental, some were intentional, and some were undetermined. And what's kind of scary is the undetermined part because you don't know like if they meant to do it or if they were doing it on purpose. So now off to Andy with kind of conclusion. Okay, so so far we've talked about um, the opioid epidemic issue on a national scale, which you can see up here on the left. Um, you can see over the past 10 years that it has really um, been an issue and it's heavily increased um, from 2005 to 2015. We've also talked about it um, on a statewide scale, which you can see on the right side of the screen. You can see that it's um, actually taken a huge jump, especially from 2013 to 2014, and it continues to jump. Um, and we've also talked about it on a local scale. And uh, I know that a lot of us may not realize that it's a huge issue, but it is, and that's why we're talking about it today. Um, but each of these regions have played a huge role in um, trying to like, combat the growth and prevent it and help the people who are in need of getting the help that they need. Uh, so I'm going to talk to you about uh, the story that uh, Connor left, or started off with uh, in the introduction. So uh, Judy Rumler later said, Steve began taking more pills, developing a tolerance, and seeking out multiple doctors to fill a new prescription, leading Steve to enroll in multiple rehabilitation and treatment programs. After a 28-day addiction treatment program, Steve relapsed and died of a heroin overdose at the age of 43. We believe this was his first time trying heroin, and it killed him. One more later said, after the loss of my son, we found a note he had written about his experience with prescription opioids, and it said, at first, they were a lifeline, and now, they're a noose around my neck. So, as crazy as the story sounds, it's not as uncommon as it seems. And uh, the reason I say that is because the opioid over overdoses uh, in the county have more than doubled over the past year, uh, and they continue to trend in the wrong direction. So I ask you a que the question of, would you want somebody as close as you, as Steve was to his mother, to go through the same thing as Steve did? Um, although the issue is not being overlooked, even in the slightest. Um, as, as, as a county, we have been given um, almost $500,000 um, towards treatment and recovery um, by the Department of, uh, Department of Mental Just uh, Health sorry, uh, and the Bureau of Justice Association. And um, Joe Donnelly clearly so shows his support um, in, this, uh, in this letter for the Bureau of Justice Association when he says, I was proud to support HCCAD's effort to fight the opioid epidemic, and I'm pleased to grant this uh, funding to coming to Hamilton County. <coughs> the opioid abuse epidemic is a public health crisis and devastates many families and communities involved. Take all of us working together to combat and successfully uh, help people who are in need of help. I'm, a, I'm confident that COPE will uh, be able to use these funds and help more Hoosiers who are in need of assistance. So obviously opioids are a huge issue in the county and uh, continue to rise. But if there's one thing that I want you to take from this, it's that we are taking, as a county, we're, we need to come together uh, and help combat it and prevent it and help anybody who's in need. Thanks.